become paradise lost. First Detroit was murder city, then Atlanta, now Miami. The nine-page article Inside focused primarily on Miami as the troubled center of drugs, crime, and refugees. That's the number one question that's asked. Is it safe to come to Miami Beach? And what are you telling them? And again, I'm saying to them, unless you're coming down here to traffic in drugs, we are as safe here as you would be anywhere else. The bridge separates South Beach from my Miami. The real Miami. As South Florida's drug trade prospers, Dade's homicide rate will continue to climb. For Fidel Castro, it was tantamount to an act of genocide. With one fell swoop, he rid Cuba of thousands and thousands of undesirables. He emptied his prisons. He cleared the bums off the streets of Havana. Murderers, thieves, perverts, prostitutes, the retarded, crippled, the winos, all were rounded up sent to Mario Harbor and put aboard boats bound from Miami. Fidel Castro himself publicly stated, I have flushed the toilets of Cuba on the United States. He bragged about it. One boat left Mariel for Key West every five minutes. They came unhindered, night and day. It became commonplace in South Florida. Shots are fired, people are killed, and much of the time the killers are people who came over from Cuba in the boat lift of 1980. Consequently, our homicide rate doubled that year. It'd be like if an invading army was dropped in here to rape, village, and burn in our town. And that's exactly what they're doing. Aggravated assaults, rapes, robberies. In no time at all, we had bodies on the floor, we had them stacked up. It was a disgrace. There have been so many murders throughout Greater Miami lately that a special refrigerated truck is now being used by the Dade Medical Examiner's Office to store all the bodies. They had arranged to rent or borrow it from Burger King, whose headquarters is down here. And I was very upset. We have been invaded by aliens from outer space. These guys are spaced out. Nobody seemed to be concerned about what was happening in the streets of Miami, so I opened my mouth. They're psychologically totally not even human. They're animals, not even animals. That's an insult to the animal kingdom. There was no law and order whatsoever. We all carry guns. My wife carry guns. My two sons are carrying guns. You see that I have a shotgun loaded in my house, and we're going to shoot someone. I certainly never traveled anywhere in Dade County without being armed. There's, there's no question about that. I always had a gun. I wouldn't sleep well without one, especially in the Miami of that time. Ed Buchanan on national television saying she wears two guns and everybody has to wear a gun. Merritt Steerheim, who was then the county manager and all the commissioners were furious, so I was persona non grata for a while. Miami was literally being torn apart at the seams. But police help won't come soon because of a manpower shortage in the department. Federal agencies readily admit they are crippled by lack of manpower, money, and resources. The city of Miami police department went on a blind hiring frenzy. It's hoped more police on the streets will help to reverse this record-setting trend. And they used to have standards. You couldn't ever have used drugs if you wanted to be a policeman. So they reduced it to you couldn't have used drugs in the last 10 years, and that didn't work. So they said, well, you could have used drugs in the last five years. They still couldn't recruit enough. So they said you couldn't have used drugs in the last two years. And finally, it got to a point where if you're not under the influence of drugs at the moment, you're hired.